When I just arrived in Berlin when I was five, I didn't speak the language. Piano was my only friend. I happened to be the best teacher of China. He thought, wow, this girl is very musically talented. But when it comes to technique, it's all over the place. In college, I started to get into symphonies and string quartets. And that was a big transformation for me. Yes. I want to be a pianist. I need to continue for, you know, a bigger dream. I have a very special emotional connection to this orchestra. I made my prom's debut with them and I'm just so thrilled I'm going back. How I started uh, playing the piano is because when I was five, my parents were working in Germany. So our entire family moved to Berlin. And you know how Berlin is, it's a city that is full of classical music. Like every street you go to, a cafe at the corner, taxi you're in, and like Beethoven symphonies, Mozart symphonies are just like all everywhere, all over the place. And when I just arrived in Berlin when I was five, I didn't speak the language, I didn't have any friends. So uh, my mom bought a piano for me so I could, you know, play on it and just kill time. <laughs> and I felt like piano was my only friend back then. And I had so much fun with it. And somehow the classical music, uh, because it's always in the background, I felt like it's a very familiar sound, like a familiar language. So I fell in love with it. My teacher was a violinist. And she was teaching piano on the side. So I, you know, she, the, the good part of that is we didn't have training. We didn't have like, you know, I didn't have to learn skills. So basically I just pick a piece of music that I really liked. And then I just sort of like, we sort of to get the position on the keyboard and just to, you know, copy the sound basically. So I really enjoyed it because it was not boring at all. I didn't do exercise my teacher thought oh this girl is like doing everything very smoothly so she wanted me to do uh, a competition as well, which was the Steinway Steinway competition for young children luckily I got a prize and this is how every you know how parents thought oh my daughter is talented <laughs> she got a prize in a competition and this is how I continued doing it without well, because my teacher was a violinist and I didn't lose interest from a very boring um, technique exercise. But two years after that, my, my parents moved back to China and I was very lucky enough that I happened to meet, like I ran into, it was a coincidence, you know, that I happened to meet the best ped pedagogue of China. And then when he saw me playing the piano, he thought, wow, this girl is very musically talented. But when it comes to technique, it's all over the place. And that's when I started real uh, professional piano training. It's like when I was about eight um, in a city, south city called Shenzhen. It's right next to Hong Kong. And I spent 10 years there, did my primary school and middle school there half professional training all the way until college. And then during that period, I entered all kinds of national and international competition. And I was very lucky. I've always got a prize, always got final uh, with all the competitions. So because like the professional training and all these competitions, like enough stage experience, uh, Found, like build a very good foundation in piano performing. So basically 10 years after that, when, when it came to a point that I had to apply for college and it was not a question that I was gonna do piano for, for real. <laughs> yes, and this is when I auditioned for Juilliard and for Eastman. And then when you, you know, go to a conservatory and this is, you know, this is how it is. Of course, after the training and the easy period in China, like everything was so successful and smooth. Of course, it came to a point like later in my teens, like I started like when I st starting to study abroad, then I realized, oh, what I had was not enough because the world is bigger. And not to mention later, then it came to 
the professional world. But, you know, in college already starting, I feel like I needed to grow as a musician, not just as a pianist. And this is how um, in college I started to get into like crazy about symphonies and string uh, string quartets, like real music. And that was a big transformation for me. And after college, of course, and then when it comes to, can I get a real job or not as a pianist? <laughs> you know, this is, it comes to a very difficult point because I, as a pianist, it's not an option that you can get an intern in an orchestra, right? <laughs> So um, that's why that's when I started doing more like real, uh, really big international competitions. I started, you know, uh, mailing my resumes to uh, recording companies and artist management and all that. You know, every every other pianist has gone through, I'm sure. So luckily, after I graduated from college, that most of my applications were very well uh, responded. And I was lucky enough to get a, get into finalists of Queen Elizabeth. And a lot of people noticed me. And that's when the management came in. And then I was lucky enough to get selected by the BBC New Generation Artists that I had really a lot of chances of building my actual, you know, concert uh, stage performance opportunities so this is how I became a professional pianist and this is how I am right now so when I was very little of course I listened to all those really the greatest recordings my favorite collection was the 100 greatest pianist of 20th century by Phillips that is really um, a real treasure box. And that really opened up my mind, you know, from, of course, like Zimmerman to Argerich to Eva Pogorelic, and then to older generation like Horowitz, Rubinstein, but like Alfred Cocteau, Mosevich, all the, uh, uh, Samson Francois, like all these like really cr uh, crazy, real, real, geniuses you know <laughs> yes I really I really love them and uh, later when I moved to the U.S. I was living I well, when I went to Juilliard I was living in um, in Manhattan in, in, in Lincoln Center and that's when I heard all these greatest people life I still kept one of the Marais Pariah's uh, recital ticket in my wallet just so you know as a pianist when I lose faith or when you're down or going through difficulties I still take out that ticket and just like you know feel it and it's like yes I want to be a pianist I need to continue for you know a bigger dream I met Radu Lupu on like very sadly he's not around anymore but um, the feel of his concert I've been, it's really life-changing. Uh, yes, so I remember so vividly his Beethoven number no. three concerto, his Brahms number no. one concerto with the New York Phil, you know, in his recital at Carnegie Hall, the late Schubert works. Uh, those are just, you know, and he's so funny in person. He's so humble, funny. Yeah, it's just like inspiring, you know, and that's when when you meet these people, then you feel very lucky. Oh, I made the right choice. I want like, thank God I'm a musician, you know. I made my prompts debut with them, so I have a very special emotional connection to this orchestra. And I, I'm just so thrilled I'm going back. After ten years returning to such an orchestra, that I made one of the one of the most memorable performance in my life. So of course, it's still like you're seeing an old friend after a long time. You know, like the world has changed so much, so much has happened. I've grown so old. <laughs> Yeah, of course, I have a very mixture of feelings of being excited, a little bit nervous, really looking forward to it. Yeah, like one of those mixtures, like everything. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this performance.
This is one of my favorite Rachmanin of concertos. It's very special. It's not really uh, a concerto. It's a rhapsody. Well, it's a piano with orchestra, and it has one of the most beautiful, the 18th variation. It has the most beautiful melodies of all time. Like every time I come to this melody, everybody is touched. Everybody loves this, and of course, it's called a theme of variation. So the theme is a very famous, uh, this you know, A minor theme by Paganini. It's a violin, you know, uh, Caprice is one of the most well known theme, and it's very. Easy, easy to listen to is one of the most intimate work of Rachmaninoff. It's not his other, not like his other concertos. That's really huge and very thick texture, uh, very long. You know, this one is more. It's simple, straightforward, but not in an any less way. Uh, it's one of his latest work. So it's just a very, very special work. Everybody, audience really love it. We love it. And it's perfect for playing with the Oster Symphony again, playing with an old friend. I always do these things my own way. Of course, you know, it's when it comes to a composer like Frank Minoff, it's already very recent. And, uh, you know, uh, I've heard all of these recordings, of course, but I, you know, this is why we're still, ha this profession still exists if, you know you're like we're constantly reinterpreting it in our very own honest way and this is what's what makes our profession meaningful yes usually of course we growing up like listen to others recordings so when i becoming the one who's making the recording of course i try to have it keep it as most original not being influenced by anything at all it's very difficult to do, but again, this is why I'm here doing my job. <laughs>